over the holidays, we asked if you had any questions about best practices for practices that you can put into use in your own home. And we got a number of really good questions. So I'm gonna go start going through this list. First question, how do you choose a paint color? It's a really great question. Um, it comes up all the time here at the museum. We have a standard paint color that we use throughout our gallery walls. Um, traditionally in galleries and museums, you'll find sort of an off neutral white. Um, it's usually called gallery gray. A shade that we use a lot here is called whisper gray. And if you put a sheet of white paper against it, you'll see that it's not a true white. Um, it's softened a little bit so that the art can really do all of the work and the color can fall into the background. So that might be how you think of uh, your paint layout of your home is that you have a, a throughout neutral and then you have accent walls. That's a really common way to approach things. So as long as you're thinking of paint color in terms of accent walls, you have a lot of latitude is in terms of color saturation and color choice. In the museum, we're really careful about when we use paint colors because it can really change the entire mood and feel of an exhibition. So every paint color journey starts here. We have our big swatch book fan, and generally this is a group decision between myself, um, our excellent graphic designer, and our curatorial staff, and even the artist uh, whose work we're using in the exhibition. So, for example, if I was looking to have a off neutral wall that was kind of something that was along the lines of an olive green um, or something that was giving me sort of that natural kind of um, terra verde green vibe, I might go through all of these and compare them in place with the real light that is in the space. It's always the smartest thing to do, to look at um, how the light in the room and with the artwork really feels. So you can kind of guess ahead of time, but if you can if you can bring it, you know, that's why we have these things that you can bring home from the store so that you can really see them in place. But then this is always the problem. This is a really tiny, tiny sample. And once it's spread across a large wall, it can be really different than you thought it would be. So we have the luxury of huge walls at the museum. So if we're doing um, some paint samples, like I might get all three of these colors in a row right here. And I will do a nice large four foot by four foot swatch on the wall with a test paint sample. And I'll compare those colors. And then I'll really know if I need to go darker, lighter, less saturated, more saturated, more towards brown, more towards red. There's all these nuances of paint color that um, if you're making that a decision that is, you know, maybe a permanent one for your home, it really is worth it to take the time to test them out. So when you're choosing a paint color um, and you're able to do those test patches on the wall, that's your best case scenario. But if you can't, for whatever reason, just remember this when you're choosing a paint color, the color that you love so, so much, whether it's like a deep emerald or a blue or a bright yellow, what you really want always, if it's on a large wall, is the most perfect color. You want the less saturated version of that. You want the slightly lighter, less deep version of that. Sometimes it'll look like it's mixed with just a little bit of gray or something to tone it down, but when it's spread across your wall, you'll realize that that's the color that you actually wanna see in your home.